Welcome to Field Sports Britain, coming to you this week from a small town in Germany for reasons that will become apparent next week. Coming up, is your shooting shoddy? Has your wad gone walkabout? Do your shots go south? You need the new tracker. We've got Ant Glasgow Jr, the prince of predators, the high priest of pike. We have the regulars hunting YouTube and news stump. First, let's slow the pace down a little bit and join Bar and Pace sporting journalists to learn how to walk and stalk into a roebuck. for anything that's going to be on that side of us, but it's the best that we can do. We can hear a lot of farm machinery in the background. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but there's a lot of sowing and, and ploughing going on at this time of year. But you need to use these things to your advantage. If you've got background noise like that, it can help cover your own noise. like this your ears are also very much your friend it's quite thick quite difficult to be able to pick up the deer <laughs> it's a very good idea every so often just to sit down in an area where you can see stuff moving through but might be quite difficult to pick up and just listen we don't have too much wind right now so there's not too much disturbance you can hear some birds and the odd wood pigeon making a noise above me and just listen to the ground crunching. It's very dry in here. The sticks make a lot of noise. And as quiet as deer are, you can normally hear them coming before you'll see them in an area like this. Give it five, 10 minutes. It lets the forest calm down around you as well. Okay, I've just spotted the first row. You can just see its back out here. In the, I think there's a rape field. The rape's standing about knee height at the moment. So all I can make out is it, its arse basically sticking out. At the moment, I don't know what it is, but the great thing about this time of year is we're still fairly early on. The loose family groups that row form during the winter months, they pretty much keep those. Very soon they'll be starting to break up as the bucks want to find their territories. But the likelihood is if there's one, there's more, which will give us an idea of the animals that are in this area and also give us an idea of the, the bucks that are coming through this year. I know this farm pretty well, so I have a fair idea of what bucks I expect to find, but there's always a few surprises. either just dipped out of view or he's couched up lying down. 
It's what Mip over. You know, use the Land Rover as a bit of cover. He's been sitting there the whole time he's been out in the field. And we're just going to sit and watch for a little while. Uh, but the buck's nowhere to be seen. I'm pretty convinced he's probably sitting down, couched up. So we're going to open this gate here. Just have a real nice, gentle stalk down the valley. Might have a spy just from down here because you can get a pretty good view all the way down onto the valley bottom. And usually if there are a few roe deer out, you can spot them. Then we'll go on through and stalk them all the way to the end. Oh, hang on, there he is, he's back out. <laughs> just as I say that, he's there. So I'm just gonna slowly get to the ground to get out of sight. sitting down pretty much what we saw him last time and he's just stood up he seems to be pretty focused on something but it's not us okay I'm, I'm in the sunlight here which isn't ideal I should really be sitting in the shadow but he popped up and I wasn't expecting it fortunately I've got all this dead grass behind me and I'm sitting against a fence I'm not silhouetted so I don't think he's gonna spot me best plan is just to sit it out here for a little bit, just see what he's going to do. You never know, he might just drop off on the other side of the brow. He's not long stood up and he's actually sat back down again. So what we're going to do, we're in a pretty poor position here. We're going to make haste out of the way. I'm going to try and find myself a better position down there. Something is possibly within range and then we can reevaluate from there. I'm going to use this opportunity to get out of here. I must have spooked him. What a pain. I thought that was a done deal and that's always the biggest mistake. I think the job's done before you've completed the task. Thank you, Byron. Now, somebody else who does things gently and it doesn't always come off, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. It's all kicking off in Malta. Animal activist Bill Oddy has been described as a mental case by the Maltese Hunting Federation. Meanwhile, BBC presenter Chris Packham has been questioned by local police. Mr Packham was campaigning against the spring hunt on the island. The season lasts three weeks. Police questioned Packham for four hours as he tried to film bird shooting. In a statement about bird shooting, the Maltese High Commission in London condemned publicity-seeking efforts of individuals that do little to contribute to this healthy debate constructively. The government of Alberta in Canada is looking to add a new species to the quarry list. After years of lobbying, hunters want to be given permission to hunt sandhill cranes. About half a million of the migratory birds nest or fly over Alberta. Sandhill cranes grow to more than a metre tall, with a wingspan of more than two metres. British Pathé has uploaded tens of thousands of its films dating back to the 19th century. It's a gold mine of hunting and shooting footage. This film from 1919 shows the Vale of Aylesbury with the caption what can be more typically English or stir the pulse more than the grand old sport of fox hunting, even in these modern days? And this is King Carol and Prince Michael of Romania, pheasant shooting in 1939. The British Conservative Party has dropped a manifesto pledge for a vote on Hunting Act reform. It leaves the field clear for countryside campaigners to vote for other parties in the upcoming European elections. The UK Independence Party is courting the rural vote, and even the Lib Dems have dropped their anti-hunting policies in their new manifesto 2015.org website. Farmers in Italy's South Tyrol region want an end to the local ban on hunting bears. They say the success of an EU project to reintroduce brown bears to northern Italy is causing a growing threat to their livestock, with bear kills of sheep now widespread. And finally, this video from Poland definitely carries the kids don't try this at home warning. They've built what appears to be a handheld cannon which blows up. 
You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam is disappointed with his shooting. The Tracker has reached the UK. We covered the launch of this shot shell at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas in January, and I had a happy time giving it a go. Well, now it's time to turn to the experts, and we well, choose sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam to pass his inscrutable gaze over them. So these are the, uh, the AA trackers, which should show me why I'm missing, as opposed to just missing, in theory. So the thing I hate most, being not a very good shotgun shooter, is the fact that when you miss, you don't actually know why you're missing. And although there's lots of helpful people down the playground, if I guess, they don't know what they're on about, and you often get conflicting information. Whereas with these tracker shots, they can see really easily when they're looking over your shoulder. You can even see on a target like this when you're shooting yourself. So as a training aid to work out why you're missing a particular target and how to remedy it, it seems like a brilliant idea. Tracer ammunition is fun, but expensive. Tracker is relatively cheap. So how does it work? The tracker is really distinguished by its wad. Um, the wad has two really special features. The first is the petals that open up at the beginning of the wad are larger and they've also got a notch cut out of the corner which makes them aerodynamic and causes the wad to spin and stabilise through spinning. The second is it's got a groove in the base of the wad that traps half a dozen eight pellets and that weights the back of the wad and keeps it stable. So it will track with the shot pattern um, and it will follow further. It won't just drop away from the shot pattern like most plasmods will. So you can watch that wad onto the target behind the shot pattern um, very clearly. Um, and it gives you just that extra edge. For the first 30 yards of the, uh, the course of the shot, you'll find that you're in line with the pattern and hopefully in line with the clay or the, or the bird if you happen to want to correct yourself a little on a game shooting day. So, verdict then, you mean shot you. This does actually seem to work. If you're looking over the shoulder of the shooter, you really can see uh, where your shot string is going, and if you're missing behind, you know to give a bit more lead, um, and to get a chance to actually prove that here with some, uh, with some instruction, um, and to see it in action is absolutely brilliant. Well, the Browning Press launch is a wonderful chance for shooting magazine writers and cameramen to get together for a blast and a chinwag. The consensus is that the tracker will do well in the UK. There is a variety of new guns to look at today, including a pair of Maruku shotguns for £5,000 and the 725 in 20 bore in both 30 inch and 32 inch barrels. One of the Browning staff has never shot before. She is a new intern at the Belgian gun maker. She has come all the way to England to help out at this event. I've never even hold a gun before. So it was brand new for me. And I don't know, I heard scary stories about like how it comes back in your shoulder and in your face. So I wasn't really sure. But then the, the team was really nice and they made me feel comfortable. So I felt like trying it. You hurt your cheek a bit. Yeah, I did the first time. I think I wasn't ready for, for it. So I didn't stick my cheek on the thing enough and it just, hurt me but the, then I hit a clay and that was awesome. <laughs> and if you want to know more about the tracker which is launched in the UK and across the world visit browningint.com. Next up fresh from fishing Britain it's and not a six-legged terrestrial but large and hairy pike catching Glasgow Junior. A bit rural here isn't it? Yeah, this is, to be fair, this is my kind of fishing. Is it really? Yeah, 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 I love it. You know, I, I got you down as kind of super urban, catch fish off a well, piece, piece of tarmac. The thing is, I grew up fishing urban areas, um, but my parents wanted to get me away from Manchester, um, and I grew up on Anglesey. So, it's rural, but this is, this, this is what I call real pike fishing. You know, it's extreme. 
What was it about? What was it about predators? We call them, do, you, do you call them predators? Or do you call them pike? predators? Yeah, predators, yeah. pike, perch, zander. Um, what really grabbed me by the nuts uh, with with the, with with the predator fishing is uh, my mum hit a decent chub, and, a, and there was a pike attacking a keep net. From then onwards, uh, as my mum was bringing a chub in, this pike grabbed the chub. A small boy looking at a predator, that face in the eyes, and thinking, you know what, I want to, I want to fish for them for the rest of my life. You're kind of pike punk, aren't you, really? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a bit of rock and roll in there, and you know, I'm a big big rock music fan and big metal fan, and you know, I, I like me I like me southern rock music, me Leonard Skinner, blah blah blah, and uh, and uh, I, I, to be fair, that is that is my passion, is my music. Um, and the, the predator fishing is just a bonus, you know. Dream fish, last day, last day on earth fishing. Uh, it, it'd definitely be fishing for bass and pollock with my dad. Definitely, you know. It's funny, we always go back to our roots, don't we? Definitely, 100%. I, I would, um, if I had to choose between the bass and the pollock, I'm gonna get shot for this, I'd have to choose the pollock. It would be North Wales in a certain area and I would pollock fish on light tackle. From tough talking Mancunians to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First, to the southwest of England for a hedge creeping adventure with Rob Collins. He's out for the Woodspring Shooting Club to deal with pigeons, corvids, rabbits, squirrels, and a fox. Another British YouTuber, Guy Baxendale, is back after a six month break, so three cheers for that. He is in South Africa, caracal hunting in the Stormberg, and although you see nothing of the hunt, that's a big cat to have wandering around your sheep. Stay in the southern hemisphere, Aussie bush harvest finally takes a red hind in New South Wales after many years trying. A couple of possum films, Possum Catch and Cook has Josh James Kiwi Bushman after New Zealand's biggest pest so he can cook it in a stew. David Shaw's film is a bit more, well, snuff. Exploding possums in super slow motion shows more Kiwi pest eradication. Viewers of a nervous disposition stay away. Now it's silly gun time and for that we turn to America. Tracking point is the gun that aims itself. The folk from Tracking Point are out with customers and company friends in Texas, shooting Tracking Point precision guided firearms. What's it really like to shoot a 50 cal machine gun at 1200 meters? Tau Fledermaus is at the Big Sandy machine gun shoot in Arizona, shooting long distance and answering crucial questions such as what do they sound like? How accurate are they when they fire bursts? And what do the impacts look like? Find out here. And finally, it's pest control time. Aerial hog hunting, the management of Advantage has 55 shows aerial hog hunting. It calls it just one of the tools used by land managers to control exploding feral hog populations. You may call it gratuitous. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you are missing the fishing films and the air gun films. Watch our new shows Airheads and Fishing Britain. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. From shooting back to fishing and more Welsh than Owen Glendower, more fishy than Captain Ahab, it is Hal Morgan. Thank you, Charlie. This week I'm at Garnfrood Fishery in South West Wales and we're going to be doing the 120 challenge. More of that later. But first of all, Jamie, nice to see you again. And you. Now give us a bit of history about this lake. Right, well, the lake is 30 years old this year. Um, dug in 83, 84, opened in June uh, 84. So it's, uh, it's well matured now. Yeah. It's, uh, it was one of the first in Wales to, uh, to be dug, um, uh, still water. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's well matured and yeah, looking good. You started off, if I remember rightly, you did some landlocked salmon and... Uh... Oh no, that's, yeah, going back uh, some years ago, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did, we did uh, flew to that for some years, yeah. So yeah. what fish have you got in the fishery now? Uh, it's browns, rainbows, tigers. Right. Yeah, and blues, of course, yeah. So every fisherman's going to ask what's the biggest fish in the lake um, or the biggest one to come well, out then to date the biggest brown is 18 pounds to ounce that's the fishery record and um, we've had rainbows up to mid 17s um, but frequently getting double figure browns and rainbows out here and the one th good thing about all the brownies and yeah. the tigers they go back yeah that's that's been the policy of the fishery now for probably about 10 years now the browns and tigers go back and you've got visiting anglers coming from all over the place but yeah. it's not only a fishery you've got Accommodation and everything Well, else? this is it. We get a lot of repeat custom right across the UK. Um, you know, 
come in staying in the lodges and the, the cottage. We've also got a CL site up there for those caravanners as well. Um, and it's always nice to see them come back every year. You must be doing something right. Well, yes, let's hope. Now then, we're, I'm doing the 120 challenge. Yeah. Right, I need some advice. What am I going to be fishing out there today? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, afternoon to be doing it. An awful lot of food in the lake this time of year, as you know. Um, mild winter, a lot of Daphne in the lake, and they're feeding on that. I know that we've had a okay. couple of fish being spooned with Daphne in them. Buzzers, they're feeding on buzzers, and we're having olive hatches today as well. So, yeah, you're up against it. So, I've got to tell you a lot of yeah, different things then. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, Jamie, thank you very much for that. You're welcome. And if you want to know how I got on, check out Fishing Britain, 7 o'clock this Friday, here on Field Sports Channel. Keep clicking on those links on the screen to watch our other shows. And Fishing Britain's not our only other programme. We've also got the air-gunning fortnightly show, Airheads. Lots for you to get your teeth into in this week's Airheads, especially if you're a rat. Andy Crow is seeing if he can bend it like Beckham, first with a bent barrel and then a straight one. Darren Rogers opens a rat bistro. He finds out what baits work best and worst. James Marchington is rabbiting in Bunny Paradise, the Isle of Skye. There is the latest revelation from my Lord Ted of Holdover. Airgun World and Airgunner magazine expert Phil Price talks knives. David's Hot Air includes a pigeon, a couple of new airguns and lots and lots of rabbits. Day State's Tony Bielis pronounces on pellets and Peter Zamet of the Airgun Centre reveals his top luxury airguns. Click on the link on the screens to watch the film. Well, we are back next week when I will be here in Germany. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into the constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our programme that's out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.